All right. Welcome to round three of Podcasters Roundtable. We're back with, uh, you know, me the regular, but we have some new podcasters on the roundtable like we do on each round, and it's very exciting. And tonight we are going to tackle a really big topic, and we'll just see, we'll see where that goes. So the point of these roundtables is really just to have discussions, open-end discussions about issues that face podcasters and podcast producers. So, you know, I bring on other podcasters, you know, eventually we'll get you on the uh, show. If you're listening to this in the audio only feed, you should check out the uh, Google Plus page and uh, also check out podcastersroundtable.com where you can get links to all the places to find the live show as well as the archives. And uh, this goes out as an audio only feed. And of course, here at the Google Plus page, it's archived via video and that goes to YouTube as well. And in addition to that, you can find us on iTunes, Miro, and of course, the most important place, Zune. And uh, we are there, especially because... Kiss up, kiss our, up. <laughs> <laughs> that is the voice of our now defunct co-host. He'll be leaving in about 10 minutes. No, I'm kidding. That, that, I will go out of order since, since we have decided to derail right from the beginning, and that's that's what the fun part of the uh, the roundtable is, going any direction we want. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Mr. Daniel J. Lewis. Well, I'm Daniel J. Lewis, host of the Audacity to Podcast and freelance web designer. All right. Nice and succinct. That's what we like because we are, we are burning time here. So Daniel's a, a semi-regular on this show. We've only had three episodes, but uh, you'll be seeing him uh, often. And... To my immediate right, at least that's how it appears on my screen, uh, we have Mr. Rob Greenlee. The reason we are on Zoom, because he reached out to me and got us on board. So Rob, for the viewers who don't know you and definitely should if they're podcasters, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Rob Greenlee, and I've been with uh, Zoom and Microsoft for about five years, uh, running the Zoom podcast marketplace. I'm the business manager of the kind of service. And so I'm really happy to be here and, and talk about the future of podcasting. Awesome. And last time I saw Rob was at uh, Blog World NYC, and uh, we, had a, we had a lot of fun there. I did. You know, you see all these people who make it out to Blog World and uh, it's sort of pass them in the hallways and hopefully get a chance to say hi. So, so, Rob, good to see you again and welcome to the show. And finally, we have Mr. – now it says Steve Lee – it's also Steven. What do you prefer, Steve? You can call me anything you want, Ray. Just make oh, sure careful. you call me on time to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he did show up on time, so I can, I can vouch for that. And Steve, why don't you just tell us a little bit uh, where you're coming from and what you do in podcasting. My name's Steve Lee, and I'm the founder of NetCast Studio over at netcaststudio.com, where we have uh, a network of shows. Awesome, which I see on the back wall there. I see some logos. Now, some of those logos look like they may have been designed by someone on this panel. You know, if you want some of the most incredible <laughs> artwork in podcasting history, talk to Daniel J. Lewis, who made a way for me that just lets me surf all over the place. Now I know what it feels like to be kissed up, mm -hmm. too. That's all right. cool. All right. So, this, so the, the chat room's probably had enough, so we'll move on. And something I will announce here, because this just uh, I just found this today, via Mike Phillips, who was on round two of a Podcaster Studio. Go check that out at Podcaster Studio. Dot, or Podcaster Studio, that's my personal show. <laughs> Podcasters Roundtable, I'll get it straight, uh, dot com. And he told me to make sure I'm using the studio mode in Google Plus Hangouts on Air, which is how we're doing this show live. And I said, what was that? And I Googled it and turned out there's a TechCrunch article uh, back around the 12th, somewhere around that time, Google Plus rolled out studio mode, which is meant for musicians, except that, you know, as podcasters, we like good audio quality. So hopefully tonight we're trying it out. It is enabled in my account, and we're trying it out, and hopefully the audio is better. And I will know at the end of this when I download this file and turn it, in the, uh, turn it into an audio-only podcast, if it actually is coming across. Now, if you're in the chat room, you may or may not notice this, but um, something to be aware of. Uh, yes, Daniel. Actually, in the chat room, Daniel Clark is saying that the audio does sound great. So this is something that we can definitely be using in the future. There are some maybe synchronization issues being reported, but Google will probably fix that eventually. 
Yes, and you know, I, who knows if that's bandwidth or or what at this point? Because I do look a little slow and choppy here, so maybe, uh, maybe that maybe my habitat. Yes, yes, yeah. My ten month old, I think, is on her iPad, so I think we're we're streaming. So, anyways, I just wanted to bring that to you because I guess a lot of podcasters would probably be interested in doing something like this using Google Plus on Air Hangouts to live stream. It's really cool. It archives to YouTube automatically. You could download the MP4 afterwards, make an audio only podcast feed. You could even make turn it into a video podcast feed if you want, but something that's really easy and it just requires, you know, your guest to have a webcam and a microphone. So, very cool. That's an update. All right, tonight we are talking about, well, you know, it's titled The Future of Podcasting, but really it's based off of one question that I asked on the Google Plus page, on my Google Plus page. And I asked, if audio truly is the preferred consumption media, but YouTube viewership crushes podcasts, what needs to change? And so I thought that that could lead us into a discussion about the future of podcasting. Um, does something need to change? You know, I just put that question out there. It was something I was thinking of, and I just wanted to evoke a response. The question might not even be formatted properly. That's the point. The point is to bring up anything you think of when I ask the question, if audio is. And when I say that, I say that because you often hear that the preferred consumption format for podcasts is audio, right? It tends to be easier. You can take it anywhere. Um, it's just easier to consume. But from what I can tell, YouTube viewership is skyrockets past pod, podcasting consumption. So does something need to change? And I really just want to throw that out. And I it won't even, you know, I'll just start there. Let's throw it out and let's see where the round table takes it. Whoever wants to jump in on that, is it a bad question? What do you have to say? <laughs> I'll, I'll start off here. Um, yeah, I think it's a good question, but I think it, there's a lot more to the story than just, just that. I think, uh, the kind of oil and water aspects of, uh, of YouTube and podcasting are definitely um, pretty clear to see. Uh, yeah, I do think that the audio piece is what stands out, you know, as far as with podcasting, at least what I'm seeing in the Windows Phone and Zoom platform here over the last five years or so is that uh, the audio piece just dominates. So, and that's that really makes sense, really, in the context, you know, if you start looking at uh, what's happening at YouTube. It's a very strong video platform. It's, there's people that have been playing around with audio there, but, but I think that there is a line that can be drawn between those two things, and that's all I'll say at this point, and I'll let other people talk. <laughs> awesome. Jump in there, Daniel. I think there might be some often confusion among consumers of what a podcast is versus what a YouTube video is because yeah. like even we were at Blog World in New York City and they had they said it was for blogging, podcasting and web TV. And there's this kind of thing and the popularity of uh, episodic media on YouTube I think is starting to kind of hurt this perception that podcasting or push this perception that podcasting is audio, YouTube or web TV is video when really it's just what distribution channels you're using. And so I think people are thinking, well, video podcast means YouTube, audio podcast means iTunes. That seems to be a common thing. What do you guys think? Is that, are you seeing that too from your listeners or uh, community? I, I agree with you, Daniel, because, and I'll tell you why. I, you know, even though it's still in its infancy, the discussion among podcasters and, and what we're doing here now, a lot of individuals don't consider video podcasts. It's a, you know, a terminology thing or a consumption thing. You know, when we look at the evolution, for example, vinyl, Atrex, cassettes, CDs, then digital, and now set-top boxes, I, I think you're right that there's a real misconception on what podcast is, what the format is, and how do you consume that. Uh, you know, I've told a few of you before, because of set-top boxes like, um, you know, Roku and Boxy and these kinds of things, my video program stats are starting to take, overtake my audio stats because of that, that flow. Nice. And, and Rob, you mentioned, because you have access to Zoom there in the, in the marketplace, or do they even call it the marketplace anymore? I'm sorry. What do they call it, Zoom? Uh, yeah, it's the same. It's, uh, it's the Zoom podcast marketplace. Yeah, it's on Windows Phone. So it is a little bit kind of a – Zoom is a brand that's kind of fading away, so it's – it's just going to be podcast here before too much longer. 
Steve, I do have a question about your content that you said you're making and it, the video is getting more popular. Is that just talking heads or is it kind of like this, a Google Plus Hangout style thing where you've got switching video? How is that? Can you give us an idea? It is, excuse me, it is a talking heads. Um, however, um, you know, I do bring up uh, websites or gadgets, but it's primarily a talking head. So pretty much like mixed live to hard drive, real time video mixing? Correct. Okay. And Steve, so you made the switch from basically, I think, an all audio show network. You basically migrated your audio shows to video or turned some of them into video. What was that decision process? Well, you know, video, obviously, even though it's just talking head, is considerable more, you know, hosting space, bandwidth. It, it, it takes more production time. You know, if, you know, what made you think you needed to get into video? Well, first of all, it's a royal pain in the tush. Exactly. <laughs> Recording it, editing it, distributing it. I mean, the, the whole ball of wax is just a pain. But two years ago, uh, we made the decision to also start doing video for release. And the decision was primarily because of all these new products coming out. Because certainly I think we can partially agree that a part of the broadcast to your television set is dying. And we're using things, um, you know, like the Apple TV and the Roku and the Boxy. And those things are starting to sell like hotcakes. So we were looking down the road saying, I think we need to get on board with this. If not, it's going to be a saturation and then nobody's going to find you. And Rob, you were saying, I, I guess I skipped over this, that you see that video, I mean, audio is still leading video, at least in terms of as mm -hmm. Zoom or podcasts on Windows go. Yeah. And so can you tell us a little bit more about that or what you're seeing or is it you see it changing? Well, I think it's, uh, it really falls back to what the screen is. And I think um, since our platform is so predominantly strong, or, or at least mostly is where the consumption is happening is on the phone, phone tends to be a much stronger kind of playback environment for audio, at least, you know, at least in the podcast area. So our platform isn't really all that strong on TV type type of playback so I don't have strong numbers along those signs so so I think that that's that's where it's a little bit different you know I think with our our platform because of that um, though I think that you know the podcast is kind of forking in two directions it's going into um, you know video and and the audio piece based on screen size and I think that where those two worlds kind of um, come together more is I think as you start thinking about slates or tablets. And I think those are strong on the video side, but th I think those devices are also strong on the audio side too. So, so, but as the screen size gets larger, it moves more towards video. As the screen gets smaller, I think it moves more towards the audio side. And I'm a little bit, and I don't know, I want to throw this out to you guys too. Is there a, any kind of concern on your guys' part that, that, uh, that the YouTube side of things is so dominated by, by one company and you're putting all your distribution into one platform uh, versus the podcast area, which is much more diverse. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So, so I would say I started as a video podcaster, and I still do produce video podcasts for work uh, as opposed to my personal projects. Mm -hmm. But, you know, YouTube isn't even really, I mean, we don't use it to host as podcasts. Um, so it's not really hosting our video podcast. It's yet another channel, kind of like just another podcatcher, really. Um, with video, you know, things with uh, like Tube mm -hmm. Mogul, which is now one load. We, we do distribute everywhere and anywhere. So, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think that we're locked in and I'm not too worried about that one place. Yeah, I do get a lot of views, but I don't see that um, podcast type video get as many views as sort of like a basic how-to video. So my videos on YouTube are mm -hmm. very different. My, I am curious, though, about YouTube, and this kind of came up when I asked that question in the comments. You know, YouTube, there's several things that were listed, and one being that, you know, cat videos are easy to pass along. They're quick. You know, it's, YouTube is really quick hit type stuff, um, although I think that there is some long form content succeeding on YouTube. But do you think that in relation to that sort of being locked into one place, do you think that podcasting not having a sort of web presence, there's no YouTube for podcasting, really, right? There's no one channel that you can easily go 
and yeah. pass on and, and socially share podcasts. It's it's we are segmented across our own personal websites. We're locked into to pod catchers. Um, what does anyone think about that? Well, <laughs> iTunes is and still I think will continue to be a large player in the podcast directory. But I think if someone's doing a video podcast then they should also be on YouTube because it's a matter of being everywhere your audience is. But I also think the people who are only on YouTube are missing a large part of their audience. Like there are shows I watch on YouTube or try to watch that uh, I don't sign up for email notifications from YouTube. So if I'm going to see that someone uploaded something to YouTube, I have to go to YouTube. And actually, I don't browse YouTube really at all. So when there's something new from a producer, like um, how it should have ended, this, these people make cartoons of how they think movies should have ended or they're making fun of movies, great series, and stuff like by Julian Smith. If I want to check that out, I go to YouTube and go to their channel. Now, yeah, I can subscribe, but depend, I don't like receiving emails. So in some ways, it could be more convenient for some people, otherwise not. But those people who are producing great content on YouTube, I think are also missing some of their audience by not distributing that content as a video podcast available through RSS. And that's really all the difference, a downloadable file through RSS. Yeah, and I'm kind of, be kind of surprised that someone who had a sort of a serialized type show, you know, that is essentially a podcast with, if they don't have an RSS feed, that's a little shocking. And I, I agree they're missing out on a a huge, a huge market. But I was thinking more along the lines of let's let's break out of we've we've sort of funneled ourselves into into video. But I was thinking in terms of you know YouTube for video on the web. It, you know when you think video, you kind of think YouTube. When you think of video on the web, when you think podcast, you might think iTunes, Zoom, Mirror. You know you might think these other big mm -hmm. ones, these other places. You can't just browse on the web. I can't just go to a website. So my mm -hmm. question really is, do you think that podcasting needs, what needs to change is the original question, right? And maybe nothing needs to change at all. We're fine. We're growing. But do you think that, um, you know, since there, it, you know, YouTube has a place on the web. And that's really kind of just what I'm saying. You know, what if there was a YouTube for podcasts on the web? Would that mm -hmm. make a difference? Steve, you look like you're itching to say something. Well, I'm not itching. Well, not for that reason is one. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I think, I think there's a difference in, in purposeability for people. And it is there's all levels of ability, whether it's technical or, or whatever the case may be. And it comes down to an issue of accessibility and ease of use. People, when they're looking for entertainment or a how-to or something, they know, oh, Go to YouTube. Hmm. Boom, there it is. When it comes to, quote, audio podcasts, it's a little diff diff different ball game in terms of how do you find the content, if they even know about it, hmm. and then how do they use it. And I think that's the real distinction in terms of the availability and the use between audio and video. So, well, okay, audio and video. But what about podcast? Are you, are you saying that podcasting, you know, we've, we've commonly heard that podcasting is still too hard, right? For all of us here, we're, we're techies. It's very easy, but to sort of cross that threshold or maybe even jump the shark, I don't know if that's the, the correct thing, but to, to go viral, I'm just going to throw every cliche out there. Does, you know what I'm saying? Daniel, does podcasting okay. need something more or does it need to evolve? Does, you know? Okay, now I see your use of the word viral. My brain was connecting with that at the same time. So you're saying like we can go to YouTube, find, run across something and say, oh, this is hilarious. I'm going to share this. That's what you're saying about something like that for podcasting, too, where it's something where people can easily browse, consume, and then most importantly, share with others. Sure. I mean, well, the base of the question is, does something, you know, does podcast, what, what does podcasting need to sort of catch fire like YouTube? So that would be one thing. Does podcasting need its sort of home on the web? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I'm just throwing out ideas, you know, maybe there's nothing that needs to change. We're doing just fine. You know, maybe you guys think that. Well, I think what you're up against is that, uh, you know, and what makes that question a challenge to answer is the dominance of YouTube. Um, though I have to say that uh, uh, folks that come in to create content uh, first on YouTube typically don't make the jump to become podcasters. And I think that that's been talked about here briefly, but 
I think that's a issue. I think from a bigger, you know, a bigger perspective, where Google is kind of gobbling up all this content, right, and creating a very proprietary platform for for this content. And what we we've been seeing is more and more content providers going to to YouTube to create content because the tools are so easy to use, right? I mean, you you don't have to be as technically savvy to produce content for YouTube as you do to be a video podcaster, right? So sure, look what, look what we're doing right here. I mean, this is yeah. literally, I open a browser, I click a few links, we all turn our webcams on, and we're essentially yeah. creating, you know, video for YouTube, which could be a video podcast, but that actually takes another level mm -hmm. to create a video podcast. I'm done with it as far as YouTube is concerned when we're done with it here. Um, so, you know, is, so again, we're, we're kind of looking at difficulty, right? So podcasting, could suffer from difficulty of production, or it could be a good thing. It weeds out bad content, potentially. It might suffer from difficulty of discovery. It may even dis suffer from difficulty of name, if we want to get real controversial. We have Mr. Netcast Studio over there. He doesn't want to be a podcaster. <laughs> oh, don't get into that story. <laughs> There's I a long history day. of that one. I hear it every day. He was first. He was first. Nobody knows the real story, but Ray and I. Yeah. <laughs> hey, on the idea of YouTube for audio, James in the live chat mentioned SoundCloud, which, yeah, t looking at a social network based around audio, I would say the only other thing out there is SoundCloud, pro or that's popular anyway. Yeah, there are all of these things where, yes, you can share things. Like even iTunes is starting to try to get this thing where you can share stuff. But it's not as social as a service like SoundCloud, where it's very easy for people to comment, to dialogue on it. Maybe that's what iTunes is really missing. And I lamented this actually just today, that you can't reply to an iTunes review. You can't have a dialogue in iTunes with your listeners. On YouTube, you can. They post comments. You can reply. They can reply with videos even. On SoundCloud, you get, have that. So it's like SoundCloud is a social network. YouTube is a social network. iTunes... It's not as social, and maybe that's why it's a bit harder for podcasts to spread as easily through iTunes or, or many of these audio platforms. You mean you're not using Ping and just completely connecting with all your favorite <laughs> YouTube people? Uh, I've got people? my Ping tied up with uh, me. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting that Rob's going to jump all over this, and he's going to make Zoom totally social, and we're going to oh, be yeah. spreading Zoom content. Forget iTunes. Welcome to the social. No, I think that, that 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 this whole social part I think is really really interesting, and I think uh, that 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 is a a component of this. But I have to say that SoundCloud, though it does have some social aspects to it, it's not really a place to go to just to, to discover new content. Though, I mean, it's it's great if you have a large group of friends that can that can refer content to you. But if you go to their homepage and you log in, it's difficult to find shows, and it's difficult. You know, it's not kind of like what that YouTube experience is where they put a lot of energy into helping new people discover new content. So I would say that that's probably one of the big weaknesses of SoundCloud right now. Um, but I also um, think that there's a hidden opportunity here ar around audio. And I think that that's, that's if you drill it down and, and even don't even have this conversation about podcasting per se, just about audio in general on online uh, is that I, I think it's an untapped area that, that that really hasn't been explored in the depth that it really could be, um, and to have that kind of YouTube type of um, you know kind of growth and impact, I think is is still out there for audio. I I I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, now that there's quite a few of them out there, I'm, how how many of us go to all these pod places and submit our shows? whether it's, uh, you know, Blueberry or Miro or whatever. There's just, there's hundreds of them. And you're right, there's not real one godfather of the audio process as that Google has with YouTube. I think there's a real distinction and a, and a variance between what, what we do with audio and what we do with video. And that's been sort of the problem with some kind of, you know, universal audio aspect to get getting content. So let me let me ask... For you guys, where do you see podcasting right now, right? So what's the status of podcasting? Do you think it's ever, you know, is it competing with radio? 
is YouTube blowing away TV, even though that's not podcasting? Let, let's get an idea. Let's think about the future. Let's start with where, where we think we're at right now and if we think we even need to move forward. Steve, where do you think podcasting is currently? Or how are you doing? Do you feel like something needs to change to put into a spot where you can monetize your show if that's what you want to do? You have a network there. You want to build a network. So does something need to change or are things going just slick smooth for you? You know, for the four of us that are on this show, it is a part of our occupation and income. Uh, for us that are on this show, it's not really a hobby. It's, it's part of our, our income and part of our life. But I think podcasting is certainly still within its infancy. When you look at the long history but from radio to TV to cable, satellite, you know, that progression took a long time. Podcasting is only, what, eight years old, nine years old, somewhere around there? Mm -hmm. So, but we're going to start seeing more and more overall consumption. But what's also going to happen by that increase in consumption and popularity, shows are going to start getting weeded out. Mm -hmm. uh, when there's so much content, things get lost, they're not discovered, and unfortunately, sometimes it's good shows. Um, I think the technology w with podcasting is going to change too. And, you know, for all of us, you know, since day one, we've pretty much tried to figure out how to do this stuff unless you listen to Daniel and Ray's shows, which are, are just spectacular shows on learning how to podcast. I think the technology is going to change too. And then you have the, the third receptacle to that, and that is us independent producers versus the commercial producers. And I think there's a big variance there. So is Big Brother going to be able to step on us? I'm not sure. I think there's a long longevity in this. But eventually, I think, personally, I think you're going to see a lot more video content. So, so as us, as on this panel here, typically, we don't dominate the top of the charts of iTunes anymore. We may have when we first started back in 05, 06, or whenever we started. Um, the big guys, right? NPR, all the, all the big networks, they dominate. So is that good? Is it bad? Um, is that a good sign that podcasting is in a good place right now? Take it, Rob. <laughs> well, I would say in some ways uh, the the playing field is has been sort of leveling for many years. Um, I'm not sure that there's a clear distinction now between the big guys dominating and the independent content provider um, holding their own. I don't think that there's that that kind of distinction that there was in the early days. I think that the the independent content pr providers now um, have upped their game. The the audio quality, the the shows, you know, that whole process you were talking about, this whole weeding out that's been going on, that's been going on for for years. And I think we're getting to a point now where um, people are able to make really high quality audio recordings now that really compete with radio and actually, in a lot of ways, surpass what radio is doing. Um, I think that that oftentimes a lot of the the audio quality is better with uh, the independent content providers than there is with the big big radio networks now. I think uh, so. I think there's this kind of um, level playing field that's that that was the dream of podcasting in the very early days um, is really I think starting to to come true, and I think it's it over time. I think. Uh, the independent content providers are, are going to actually dominate in this this particular medium. Is my that's my prediction. Well, that's good news. That's good news for us, or at least it's good news for people who are willing to put in the work because it does mm -hmm. it does take a lot of work. And you know, I I one of the things I enjoy about podcasting is the hard work because I do think it makes uh, the you know people who are in it for the wrong reasons go away by episode seven. We always hear that stat, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the YouTube, or no, YouTube, here I am, YouTube, the chat room, uh, which actually does go to YouTube, uh, coincidentally, is blowing up about the term podcast, and I think it's Steve's fault. <laughs> <laughs> now, now uh, let's see if I can scroll back. It says, Daniel Clark uh, said something. It says, he calls himself uh, an online broadcaster. Uh, he wrote an article uh, for Blog World about it. He writes a lot of great articles for Blog World, so uh, check out Daniel Clark. Uh, he's here in the chat room. And then, I, you know, I've got other people say that people still don't understand the term podcast. So, uh, Daniel, is 
the term, what do you think about this? You know, is this a thing we're still kind of fighting? Is it over? Is it a problem? Is it, is it heating progress of podcasting? Um, well, hold on. I think I left my horseless carriage in the garage running. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, the accurate term for something has to reign supreme. I mean, look at how often web blogs, how long did that take for blogs to stick on? People would call it a bunch of different things, and somewhere along the way it was web logs and then blogs. And it, it's now a regular part of the conversation. And there's no question about the difference between a blog and other kind of content on the web. I think podcasting is an accurate term. Well, I mean, the, the word itself, not necessarily accurate, but it is a title that now describes a specific kind of media distribution and, in general, a kind of method for uh, creating that content. That the, It implies that it's a bit more social, but by technical definition, it's just media distributed through RSS. But looking at educating the world or what the world perceives as the word podcast, yeah, they don't quite understand that because many people will think, well, does that mean I need an iPod? Well, that's where I think we as podcasters need to be helping to educate the world and use common terms to help the world understand what we're talking about and then say, and we call this a podcast. So like the way I do this, and I hate that I'm using completely inaccurate terms, but this makes sense to people, is I say a, I host an, a radio show on the internet or I host a TV show on the internet. It's where people can subscribe. They download it for free so they can listen or watch it whenever they want, wherever they want. We call this actually a podcast. Uh, that might be a way that I would explain it to someone. So it's letting them, it's first making it something that's familiar to them that, oh, radio show. Yeah, I know what that is. That's pretty much people talking in audio that you can listen to at a certain time and I can listen to it in the car at home, sometimes through the internet. Okay. And then when I explain beyond that, how it's different and TV show, it's familiar terms, but then transitioning it into explaining the difference and then say, we call this different thing podcast. Anyone else? I'm yeah, not <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll comment here really quick on it. Um, the term podcasts, I think um, we may go through a period of time here in the next couple of years where we will know for sure what, whether or not the term podcast has plateaued. I think if you look at the current research, it's it's definitely showing that the last two or three years, it's basically plateaued in its awareness of what it is. Um, and I think what we're coming into a time now is there's an opportunity for us to to kind of evolve the conversation to be more just like what Daniel was saying of evolving this more into the perception of of what that has long been termed a a show or a radio show and I think that the combination of those two terms podcasting and radio show will help bridge that gap and I think uh, that's that's exactly what we need to be doing is what Daniel just said we need to to change the conversation to help people understand that this is a radio show or an audio show or a video show and it just happens to be available as a podcast and I think that helps people transition to a newer way of thinking about this stuff that actually is more natural to how people think about this type of content Awesome. And I know Steve just doesn't want to go there. No, just... <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's good. So we I can think, move. Well, and I'll tell you why. I, th I think it's just a bucket of worms right now. And, you know, there's so many different, no, not just podcasts, but there's so many different nomenclatures yeah. that are so misleading or incorrectly represented when we talk about uh, what we're doing that it becomes a, a real confusion for people. Yeah. And I agree, we, there's got to be some standardization with terminology. Now, in the chat, Alan Newsom brings up a great point. He said, even with blogs, some people have never understood they can subscribe to the RSS feed. They just go to the website and read it. The same is true of podcasting. They just don't know how to get to the content by subscribing. And that's a huge hurdle we have as content, especially media content providers. 
So I think I think the good news about the status of podcasts, and as Rob alluded, that the the inter, independent broadcaster I want to say, is mm-hmm. is the, the 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 playing field is becoming level, and so I think that podcast is really just pulling up alongside all the other great content mediums, right? Mm-hmm. TV, radio, film. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not going to take over one of these. You know, podcasting is the death of radio, you know, which is, you know, total baloney. And uh, I think that we're doing a job, good job of producing quality content that's rising to the top and people are starting to recognize that content is also available on the web in sort of a regional format produced by, you know, people who are all in their homes right now. So some cool stuff is happening with podcasts. Where do we see podcasting going we we talked about mobile rob are you seeing a, a real upsurge in um is it, is it just the device people are consuming podcasts on is changing or do you think mobile is bringing more people to podcasting i think both i i mean i think we're just at the cusp of a new revolution and i think you know we're we've been seeing it here with slates and tablets and and you know with mobile phones but i think we're on the cusp of kind of a a new way for people to think about how they consume uh, web content. And I think that, that that's what we're talking about here and kind of the ubiquity of access to the internet through all these devices. Um, and, and people need to have uh, better discovery experiences. Uh, and that, that's, that's the part where I see the huge opportunity is that, you know, you start thinking about, um, social networks and friend sharing, and you think about, you know, even contextual-based uh, discovery. I think is so important here as you move in, move move into the future um, of being able to find this type of content in relation to other types of content that you happen to be looking for, and not just search, but but based on what what your interests are and having software actually help with that process I think is so important to um, growing this audience into what is considered to be you know I would consider to be the the mass mass market right I mean I mean we're still I mean we're in a huge market already I think it's what 70 80 million people have consumed a podcast at some point um, but I'm talking you know hundreds of millions of people. I think we're on the cusp of that opportunity. So Facebook's going to do everything we need then, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think Kidding. they're they're part of the answer, but I don't believe that they're the entire answer. No. Sounds like they have enough of their own issues. I don't think they tackle yeah. podcasting anytime soon. <laughs> Did you sell your stock yet, Ray? <laughs> uh, I can't comment on that. So. <laughs> Never bought any. Yeah. Dan, Daniel, where is podcasting going? Come on. I think, yeah, mobile. <laughs> it's really going mobile. But getting it to mobile devices, oh, what a pain because there are so many different apps and many of these apps are creating their own podcast directories. Hmm. And like uh, was discussed, Ray, you discussed this with um, Rob Walsh on Podcaster Studio recently about how Google killed off Google Listen. Well, (laughs) was it already dead? That's a question though. But there are these other apps like Double Twist and Miro and Beyond Pod and uh, Downcast and Upcast and Incast and Outcast and all of this stuff. (laughs) It sounds like a little kid's song. Um, All of these things. And some of them pull from iTunes, which is great that they pull that uh, information. Others, you have to submit your podcast to a whole new directory. So for podcasters to get on mobile, I think is a lot harder. And uh, especially if the website isn't optimized for mobile, and I'm not talking about just the difference between a flash player versus HTML5 player, but it's other web design issues. Like, do you really want to see a website that's designed to be 960 pixels wide on a little screen that's smaller than your thumb? That just doesn't work very well. It's not very accessible. Some people, are designing websites to work around that. But here in the chat room, we've been discussing, can you really get an easy distribution? Because that's the hardest part, getting people to subscribe to content. I think the ultimate way that will always be the best, easiest way for people to subscribe and receive your content on a regular basis is email. I think as crazy as it is, that's I think the easiest way for people to receive content. 
an email. Wow. Sounds yeah. controversial. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Daniel. I, I wouldn't have thought of that one. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you check your email? Lots, <laughs> but I also <laughs> don't, don't really watch or view things in my email either. Well, but, yeah, we yeah. don't. We, we subscribe to content through different means, but other people, either email or Facebook. That's I, Like my wife is a very strong Facebook person. She says, don't email her, send her a Facebook message. But uh, so like Facebook and email, ways where people passively receive it without having to install anything. That's mm -hmm. the hardest thing. And people receive email on their mobile devices. But <laughs> Daniel Clark is saying, email's dead. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, services like uh, FeedBurner can make email subscriptions easy where it's powered automatically from your RSS mm -hmm. and it sends out an email for all of the posts that you've posted within a certain time span. And there are other things too that can be automatic or manual. But I think if we really want to talk about what's easiest, that is. And someone in the chat room even corrected me on the YouTube thing saying that, well, not everyone's, they basically said, not everyone's as protective of their inbox as I am. And a lot of people receive YouTube updates through, mm -hmm. guess what, email. And I'm not, I hate the idea of people only subscribing through email, but I think if we want to talk about ease of use, that's it. Well, Daniel, I think what you've touched on, I think, is a need that's been needed with podcasting for a long time is a form of notification. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, 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 that really cuts to the heart here. And, and everybody kind of has their own way of getting, um, getting information to them, right? Some use email, some use Twitter mail, some use Facebook mail, some use, you know, uh, whatever medium you know it is that they they use and i think any platform that's out there needs to make all those available right i mean it's all about getting notified of an episode that you you follow you know of a show and letting you know that it's there you know for you to get in there and consume that content i think that's the bigger bigger need right mm. Well, I'd be I'd be remiss if we sat here with uh, Mr. Behind the Scenes Zoom man, Rob Greenley, who if you have a podcast, if you're listening to this and you're not on Zoom, uh, Rob is is a unique individual. Uh, we have no access to anyone at iTunes the way we do uh, at Zoom, and uh, I, I keep using Zoom, so I don't know if that's maybe a bad idea. But a lot of people know of Zoom, especially us who. Uh, podcast about podcasting, we're always telling people to be on iTunes, mm -hmm. you know, BlackBerry, Zune. Um, I have to ask, what's the future of podcasting look like at Zune? You know, is there anything that you can, you can give us insight into or, you know, you're going to show, you're going to hold up that new tablet device that you have there, <laughs> that you, the Windows 10? Um, what I can say is that uh, Zune as a, a brand is kind of fading into the sunset. Um, so, uh, that's not to say that the podcast area is fading away into the sunset. It's just going to evolve into something different and new, which I can't talk about at this point. Um, but just be rest assured that uh, podcasts are here to stay with Microsoft. And, uh, and there's hopefully, and I'm working on it every day, trying to make that next uh, evolutionary jump for the platform at this company and and I think that the opportunity there hopefully based on what what, what happens with Windows 8 and with the the new Windows Phone 8 um, you know things will continue and and um, get better I mean ho ho hopefully but the Zune brand will not be a, a part of it uh, in the future and that's that's mostly been been announced already um, so there are changes coming, but uh, you know, hang hang with us. This is a this is going to be a ride that's going to be a long term thing. So so it's all good though. And that's great news. I mean, on a recent episode, I talked to Rob Walsh from Libsyn, and in fact, it hasn't been published yet. It's uh, episode sixty three of the Podcaster Studio, and exciting news, you know, from him as well. He he's had some contact with Apple. And uh, it sounds like, you know, with this new podcast app, they're really determined to, you know, Daniel rattled off all of those podcast apps, but Apple apparently wants to make the best of them all. Now, I'm skeptical if they'll do that because I, I really like Pocket Cast. And uh, I think, well, you know, 
well, we won't go Samsung, Apple here, but you know, if you just copy them a little bit, <laughs> don't make round corners on your podcast app because you'd be dangerous. But anyways, so I'm excited about that. It's good to hear that Zoom is, uh, or you know, Microsoft, I'm sorry. It, can you tell us what we can start calling it? <laughs> uh, Microsoft's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's um, I'm really kind of the two things to really think about here. Uh, is that the podcast area is, is, is on Windows Phone. It's built into the core of the operating system of Windows 7, 7.5, 7.8, and 8. And um, so it's, that catalog is going to be core to the operating system, and it's, and it's going to have all of the functionality of the Zoom software built right, in, right into the phone. And then there's also an app and I don't know if your audience knows about this or not, but the the podcasts app um, that's in the Windows Phone Marketplace catalog of apps uh, is based on the Zune APIs. So uh, so those folks that are outside of the U.S. right that can't get access to the current Zune podcast marketplace can get access to the Zune catalog through the podcasts app in the catalog. So if you're a Windows Phone u user and you want to get access to the Zune uh, content catalog, that's that's how I would do it. Very cool, very cool. And Rob is very gracious and offers himself up uh, with yep. still the Zune title, Rob at Zune.net. If you don't Correct. have your podcast listed uh, with Microsoft, you, know, you can email Rob, and I hope he's, it's okay if I put that out there. You don't seem to have any problem with putting it out there, which uh, uh, boggles my mind, but uh, we appreciate it as podcasters because, again, we don't have access to anyone helping us like the way that Microsoft has supported us. So we appreciate that. Uh, Steve? Yo. Are you awake? I'm here. Oh, that's good news. <laughs> yeah, uh, <I'm> here. <laughs> can you maybe commission a logo from Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> that we can then copy to put on our website for the new Microsoft. So what do you what do you think about the future? Is that great news for you, Steve? You know, here's what I would say. I would say for all you podcasters, netcasters, internet broadcasters, whatever the coin of the day is, grab your belt, pull your pants up because this is going to be an exciting ride coming. Yeah. This stuff's going to explode. We haven't seen anything yet. So I would say start doing your homework, start working on great content, working out the processes, getting your stuff everywhere it can be, whether it's audio or video, and hold on because it's going to be a great ride. Uh, but be prepared because, as I have always said and Mike Phillips in chat has just said, the amateur shows are going to get weeded out. So you got to start getting on top of your game, and then let's go for a great ride. I think um, there are a lot of years coming forward with this whole providing of content. Awesome. And I, I have looked over at the chat room, and sorry, I think Daniel's doing a much better job of keeping up than I am. I'm trying to think of the next question. So uh, Daniel is an awesome co-host, and uh, he's rocking it out in the chat room. I'm seeing Xbox pop up out of the corner of my eye a lot. Uh, Rob, how does Xbox play in? I, you know, I don't have an Xbox, unfortunately. I probably shouldn't get one, but I do want one. Now, Xbox is a, you know, it's a media center, and it sort of could be an over-the-top box. I don't know if it's officially considered that. But how do podcasts uh, collaborate with Xbox? Do they at all? Do you think there's something coming with that, getting it on TVs? Well, all I can say with uh, the Xbox part is that, um, yeah, if you're a content provider to, to YouTube, you already have access to Xbox, first of all. Uh, podcasts as a standalone type of experience on the Xbox is it may or may not be coming here in the future. Um, uh, my my projection would be that uh, uh, you know if it is coming, it's coming way down the line. So um, I would just think of uh, podcasts on the Xbox um, to be through YouTube at this point. All right. Well, it's good news for this show. So you can find this yeah. show on Xbox. So I'm happy about that. Daniel, as we start to wind down here, uh, anything coming from the chat room? Uh, since I do see you working away there, anything on it? Well, they're talking about wanting to erect a Tower of Babel that we can just submit a 
single podcast somewhere and they instantly go out. And that would be cool. And I think right now that kind of exists. It's called RSS. RSS. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But it's still, we have to set it up. That's the thing. We can't just create something out there and it instantly go out to everywhere. We have to first set all of that up and get approved and go through the time to find out where do we need to be and try and distribute our content. Uh, and sometimes different styles like YouTube for video podcasters. So not only am I hearing, you know, we've heard in the past that maybe one of the hurdles for podcasting is that it's hard for the end user to get, but it sounds like it may be a little bit hard for the producer as well. Uh, do you guys think that that hurts podcasting, that more people with great content aren't getting into it? You know, we, Rob mentioned about the YouTube people who don't often migrate to podcasting. Do you think that there's an issue there? I don't know. I don't think that they necessarily see that there's an issue uh, if they're able to get all of their needs fulfilled on the YouTube side, they're probably just going to stay on YouTube. And I, I mean, as we all know, it can be expensive to be a podcaster. It's technically challenging, and not every content provider is going to be willing to uh, put themselves through that challenge um, for what they may perceive as a as a more difficult path. So. so, so let me let me say the three ugly little words: blog, talk, radio. And if, you, <laughs> if you work for them, I apologize. But actually, I don't. Uh, these are types of services that are attempting or have attempted to make podcast production easier, right? I know there are services that you could call on a phone, speak into, and deliver as a podcast. Now, I think that some of what we talked about in terms of quality, I'm always talking about that uh, the content is is the most important, but quality is right there with it. And that's the stuff that really is going to go over the threshold of being actually really popular. Uh, do you think services that try to make podcast production easier, uh, do you see more of that coming? Do you, do you think that quality is going to, to trump things? You know, in the beginning, it wasn't about quality because it was just an awesome medium that anyone now has a voice and there are, there are no gatekeepers. You just put out a show. And I was listening to guys in a living room talking on Radio Shack mics. It didn't matter. Now I think it does matter a little bit. Um, what do you think about these services that make it easier? Is, is there some, you know, is there something good about that? Um, who, 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 who do you got to say? You know, what do you, well, Daniel, Blog Talk Radio. You don't have to talk about that, that one. Goes, but. That goes back to our podcasters roundtable round one, talking about ownership of our feed. So yeah, there are services out there that can do a lot of this stuff for you, like you just publish to them and they put you on all of these different places, but then you lose control and or ownership. So it's tough because it's one thing or the other really right now. Uh yeah, I think if you look at uh, you know a lot of YouTubers, uh, they're not too control too concerned about the control because they're able to get a get a paycheck and uh, get their all their needs fulfilled. So I think it's a challenge. I think for podcasters, um, there may be a service that's on the horizon here that uh, maybe can actually do both things: can offer a great service to podcasters plus maintain that quality. I'm not sure that the the technology is there to really. Um, see that quite yet steve steve what do you think i mean you've got a big bad studio there but do, do you know do podcasters need to erect these huge studios with lights and high lpr 40s which you know the, most of us here have although rob is standing out with the uh with the sure and I, I like to see that a little variety on this show gosh darn it we're all the same but uh you know <laughs> What do you think about the difficulty of podcast production? Is it a good thing? Does it keep out the bad content? Does Blog Talk Radio, you know, crush podcasting into a into a bad name? Or you know, what do you have to say about that? I think with today's open world and the internet, there needs to be avenues and tools for anyone to do whatever they want. Uh, whether it's graphics, whether it's audio, whether it's video, and those tools are certainly available. Those that use certain types of services, certainly I don't believe are going to have any kind of legit longevity uh, because they either fade out or once somebody hears a great sounding podcast or netcast or wherever we go from there, um, is really going to understand the differences of what 
we do when we sacrifice our time, our money, our equipment, and learn the ins and outs to try to do our best to provide the best quality content possible. And I think, and I've talked about it a couple times, but I think that's another check mark for those that are going to make it and those that aren't, um, just because after time, people are just not going to deal with it anymore. So I, I see Daniel, I see you active in the chat room, which is cool. And, and approaching one of these subjects that a lot of podcasters face, <clears throat> in the beginning, it was a lot more controversial to say, I want to make money with my podcast, right? So a lot of people are uh, mentioning sponsorships. And I believe that a lot of podcasters do have some interest in seeing a return, not just in community and, and brand awareness or whatever you're doing with your podcast or, you know, just having a blast. Um, you know, does the fact that, you know, maybe making money from a show uh, is so difficult that it will push some great shows out of the way. You know, Rob mentioned uh, your YouTube people making money and they're doing great. In fact, I make money on YouTube and surprisingly, I am surprised at the checks that come in from YouTube uh, from the content I produce, which is very different than a podcast. Uh, they're instructional type videos on a lot of stuff on gear. But uh, that's another roundtable. So what do you think about this sponsorship and moving forward in the future of podcasting? Um, do you see sponsors coming to podcasts? Do you think that uh, we, need to, you know, we need to funnel more money into podcasting in order to push out more great content? What do you think about that? I think that advertisers are going to start seeing that podcasts are reaching exactly the audience that they want instead of just trying this blanket marketing like a billboard on the road, well, how many people does that billboard actually apply to who see it? Uh, what percentage? Tiny. Same thing with television advertising. Tiny percentage. But on a podcast, like if you advertise a, a technology product on a technology podcast, well, you're advertising to people who are fanatics about technology in some way. So it's a much better fit. And I think more and more advertisers are going to start seeing that and will want to jump on board and appeal to exactly that audience that they want to. Does anyone cringe when I say making money with your podcast? <laughs> no. You should be proud of it if you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Because, what, 99% are not making a dime because they do it for the love of what they're uh, talking about, but how many podcasts are really only scraping the service just by using affiliate links? They really don't have, quote, sponsors. And I think that's a part of the corporate world that eventually will change because marketing and these, and these big corporations don't understand this yet, that there's still a mindset of only the big medium outlets are the way that we're going to be able to sell our product through CBS and, and these kinds of things as where the real numbers are eventually going to be in the content that we're providing. Now, is everybody going to get picked up for those kind of sponsorships? No, certainly not. And you'll even notice differences in TV stations, how the advertisement of a local station is certainly different than, you know, the national station. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to weigh all that in, but eventually, yeah there's going to be big time sponsorships coming. Sweet. I'll stick around. What do you think, Rob? One, one challenge though that I see um, and have been seeing here for many years now is the whole aspect of uh, the distribution side of this. I mean, thinking of iTunes or Zoom or any big aggregation site um, for podcasting uh, has had a, has had really no avenue for them to monetize, to justify continued investment in platforms uh, on, on the distribution side. And I think it's, I'm not sure what the answer to that, that question is. Um, I know that there are some obvious ideas that are out there, like uh, some portion of, of any kind of aggregator platform having um, subscription, paid, paid subscription content and maybe some sort of revenue share opportunity between um, certain podcast networks for increased visibility or something, you know, some aspects of that. And, and oftentimes these are the same business models that are applied today to, um, 
to other type of content deals with distribution platforms, you know, like iTunes and Zoom and Xbox and whatever, that do big deals with the big studios. And I think that, uh, that there, there really needs to be some aspect of that that comes into this independent medium somehow that, that works and makes sense for all parties involved to, to really um, justify the investment and, and marketing and those kind of things that will help reach the, the larger numbers of, of audience um, out there. And I think that's a, that's a big question that I've been trying to answer in my own head for a couple of years now. And I, I, I really don't have an answer yet uh, to how that formula works. And it could just be that it's too early to actually know what the answer to that is. It's yeah, a great yeah. point because how many TV stations are there compared to podcast shows? Yeah. So really doesn't, again, come back to what we were talking about earlier about discovery? Even advertisers have to know that you're there, not just listeners. Mm -hmm. Well, we are definitely going to tackle uh, this podcast sponsorship on, on an upcoming episode and what people are doing currently. Um, you know, I think we've had a few examples of some big money entering, and we've had even networks bought up. You know, Revision 3 recently being bought by Discovery to be their sort of web channel arm. So some interesting things coming. I hope that, um, you know, Daniel mentioned that the the, it's sort of different when you know exactly who you're reaching, right? You can do more with a smaller audience. So hopefully we can, maybe it's our job to educate the advertisers, sponsors in the power of podcasting and, and its ability to reach a niche and convert the listeners. Um, so, you know, hopefully there's someone in the audience who just says we're all stupid for even, even bringing in money and we're rotting our shows and the whole thing, you know, so <clears throat> maybe we'll get someone like that on in, in the, in the future. Cause in the beginning I'd go to podcast meetups and man, it was people who, who were there for the passion and people who were there to make some money. And, and there was some headbutting. And it, it was fun to participate in, in that kind of conversation. But I do think that everyone works really hard. And, um, you know, if you want to make some money the podcast, it's a good thing. I'm going to start to wrap it up here and just maybe ask for some final thoughts on, you know, so anything we left out or something you thought you wanted to approach, something you saw in the chat room, or just a final thought on, on podcasting and you know, where it's going and uh, in your own mind. What do you think uh, is podcasting heading in the direction that you want it to? Is it working for you? Or um, do you see something totally different coming for yourself as a podcaster? Steve? You know, we may be kind of tainted in our answers because we're in the space. That's good. Tainted is good. Tainted is table. good. <laughs> but I think the real discovery or, or the final product of what we've been talking about is going to be the public and how they perceive and how they're going to, how they take podcasting. It could die. It could flourish. But I really think it's an issue of whether it's going to be accepted as a, as a real staple and prime medium for content. I think it will be because of all our interconnectivity now, whether it's our, you know, our TV, our computer, our phone, which is not a phone anymore. It's, I don't know. I, I never use it to call anybody on it. But yeah. I, I, I think we're going to really, I, I mean, that, that line in the sand is going to come. And what it's going to be and what the decision is, I don't know. But for now, the future does look very promising, I think. Got to wear shades, Steve. I like it. Let's break into song. Thanks. Well, Steve, uh, Thanks for joining us here tonight uh, on our way out here. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find your podcast content? I'm not sure I want to because then i got to tell the story like I tell 20 <laughs> times a day. <laughs> Shouldn't have come on the show, Steve. But you know what? No, I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, if you want to know the story, you can email me uh, from my website, netcaststudio.com. Fabulous. Thanks. Mr. Rob Greenlee, final words. Yeah, I I want to wrap it up just by saying um, that that I'm I'm really not sure how this is all going to play out. I I think it, over over the next five to ten years, if you want to look that far out, I think it's it's a big question mark um, how big this is going to get. And I think that the big reason for that, in my mind, is is that it's a generational thing, um, and I'm not entirely sure that the next generation is going to be all in as much as we are about audio. 
Um, they may be more dominant on the video side than we have any idea right now. Um, so it, it just may may just be that the audio side is is like like the old record player technology. You know, it, it just doesn't fit with the modern modern world. And I don't know. You know. If you're a younger person listening to this, you, you probably have a better idea on that than, than I do about, you know, w what the future of audio podcasting is. Um, I'm also not sure what the future of video podcasting is either. So I think there's a lot of questions that need to be um, answered here over the next few years. I mean, we can have a, a say in, in kind of making what happens uh, based on what, what we decide to do as an industry here. Um, and and make terrific content that will keep people interested in in audio, and I think that's the challenge because I don't think that the broadcast radio piece is going to keep um, that younger generation as engaged, and I think that if audio is going to maintain its its um, level of dominance, um, the audio is going to have to get a lot better, and and I think that's that's what Steve just threw the challenge out. Is that the the quality needs to keep going on the up up direction, and value and all those things, the entertainment you know aspect of it is so important as well. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of my final thoughts. Kind of long long winded. I don't actually have a podcast right now. I'm I I just guest on other people's podcasts right now, and I may at some point start my own show again, but uh, not probably in the next six months though. <laughs> cool. Well, Rob has a very unique position in podcasting and, and has the uh, the control of things going on with podcast over on the Windows and Microsoft side. So we're very welcome or we're very, uh, it's our honor to have you on to speak about podcasting. And you do, you are a prominent guest. I see you uh, on uh, with Todd Cochran on, on his show and mm -hmm. uh, you do a great job. So I think your value might be in that you're just so open and, and you're coming on these shows and helping explain things like that to us and talking to podcasters. You know, I think one of the, the best things that you said there is, you know, kind of like it is right now and it was in the beginning, it is in the future, podcasters have control, right? So we can kind of decide what we're going to make of it. You know, and Steve said, you know, we need to be making better uh, of the content. So for me, it's exciting because again, we're still in control, right? It, it, and ultimately it is your own show. If anything, you have control over your own show. And so, uh, Rob, where could we find you if we want to get in touch with you or find out where you're making all these appearances in, in the wild? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on, on a fairly regular basis on Todd's uh, show, the Saturday Morning Tech Show. Uh, it's it's uh, usually on at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Saturday mornings at uh, geeknewscentral.com. And then I also can be found on Twitter. I'm at, at Rob Greenlee, and that's two E's. Uh, and certainly if you want to follow me there I, I tweet quite often about podcasting uh, yeah I have two blogs I have one I was my old radio show that I did for eight years uh, called uh, webtalkradio.com and I have a bunch of archive shows up there going back to 1999 back back when I started doing this kind of stuff in a broadcast radio station and then I also have have my own personal blog at robgreenlee.com so that's how you can find me Awesome. Very cool. Special thanks to Rob for joining us tonight. And uh, Daniel, final word, uh, podcasting. Well, consider this. Uh, audio podcasting, audio, just on its own. Easiest to consume because you can consume it while you're driving, jogging, walking, reading, eating. I mean, reading. Yeah, I do that sometimes. I listen while I read something else. But audio will be around forever. It will always be very easy to consume, very legal to consume in most places, too. But consider this, will people's passions ever die? No, people are always going to be passionate about something. Will people ever want to stop talking about things they're passionate about? No, no. they won't. So podcasting provides a way for people to talk about their passions to an audience. And even the podcasters who have a small audience of 20 people, well, like I say often in my podcast, imagine getting a room together every week of 20 people who are there faithfully, consistently, just to hear what you say and you interact with them. 
that's what the power is of podcasting. How many people would love to just rattle off for 30 minutes about what they're passionate about? Podcasting enables people to do that. And sure, there will always be different levels of quality, just like there are with TV shows still. But because that method will always be there, or because people will always have that need now that they've gotten the taste, I think that podcasts will be around for a long time. What we call it will probably change at some point, and how it's distributed and how it's popularized will change, but I really think it's going to be around in the long term. Awesome. Well, that's good news for us and the show and, and podcasting in general. So, yeah, I like it. I like that's a great enthusiastic note to go out on. Daniel, why don't you let us know where we can find you and all your podcast happenings? I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and I host the Audacity to Podcast and several other podcasts, which you can find all of them over at noodle.mx. And you can follow me on twitter.com slash the ramen noodle. Fabulous. My camera just freaked out, and You're so I am actually easy, fixing Daniel. that. I'm trying to make everyone vomit before we leave here. <laughs> and, and, and here is where audio is fortunate, because those listening audio only will not have the uh, sensation of nausea as they're watching this. All right, well, that is a wrap, and I just want to thank again all you guys for coming on here and discussing the huge topic of the future of podcasting, and I had a great time. If anyone watching this or listening wants to find out you know, to get the links of all the things. Obviously, you're not going to, you know, maybe I used to have a notepad when I listened to podcasts. When I was writing everything down, but you might not have that. So check out podcastersroundtable.com. And uh, I would give you my own personal custom URL to uh, the Google Plus page where all of this happens live. But um, I'm not going to bother. Google is going to, well, they already started to slowly release vanity URLs. And I am not Justin Bieber, so I do not get mine yet. Uh, but, uh, or in the future, we will have that. But again, podcastersroundtable.com. You can get all the links there, and hopefully you can join us for a, a live session soon. And I am rotating this uh, different nights to try to include all the podcasters possible. You know, you see Daniel on a couple episodes. You'll see Dave Jackson on a couple episodes. And, of course, you always see me, see me because I start the broadcast, and I pretend to host. But uh, we will be integrating – the chat room, as far as, you know, people who are in the chat room, I want to thank you guys for attending and we're going to get you on the show on camera and discussing future episodes or future issues that all of us face as podcasters. So that's a wrap on round three. Thanks guys. And uh, we will see you next time. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>